All right, three, two, one. Let's start the show. Gym Life Podcast, Fit Jacked and Stacked. One show to rule them all. Thanks for joining me, guys. I am Joe Janiga, your host, and I am having a blast doing this. And thank you so much for supporting the show. Um, each and every week, I get so much more feedback by all you guys out there. And uh, it just gets me so excited about uh, each one of these shows every single week, which, of course, as you guys know, I try to put out before every weekend. I find myself on a Saturday afternoon doing this podcast today just because I'm eh, busy during life, right? Uh, this isn't necessarily my full-time job, albeit last night I moonlighted at a bar for my buddy doing a little uh, bouncing work or, as we would call it nowadays, security work, uh, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I'll continue to do that off and on, as I have been uh fridays and saturday nights because that's kind of my party guys i don't do a lot of drinking but boy i like to kick drunks out of a bar so nothing's more entertaining than that you never know what you're getting i will say the women though oh boy i don't want any part of them sticky hands you can't separate hair from hands it's just too difficult a lot of biting a lot of scratching yeah that's what i don't like about the job but in any case entertaining nonetheless i did it last night getting a late start here on a saturday afternoon to get the show out to all you guys Um, and we got a good show for you today. We're going to talk about World's Strongest Man. Of course, that's the big news. Uh, A little bit of good, a little bit of bad, a little bit of indifferent. Of course, you guys know I'll share my opinion on that. Got some good uh, health stuff, uh, homeopathic stuff. Uh, Talk about some shows today that's going on. Talk about a little bodybuilding, or at least somebody in bodybuilding that's always worth mentioning, and the age-old controversy with this character that we'll talk about. Um, yeah, we'll get in a little more detail about some other events out there. And oh, you know, by the way, I wanted to give a, a quick sort of teaser for all you that are going to turn this off in the first one minute and 30 seconds and come back to it. Uh, get ready to uh, watch the interview I'm going to have this week with a special strong woman. Uh, I'm not going to release her name because I want you guys to get kind of a little bit of a teaser. I'm going to have her on and we're going to talk about performance enhancing drugs. Uh, in strength sports, particularly strong woman. And she's got some very, very strong opinions about this. Uh, we're going to get real detailed in, in performance enhancing drugs um, uh, amongst women. Uh, be very transparent about it. Um, we've laid out some really good bullet points for the show to be as thorough as we possibly can. And I just think you'll enjoy it. Listen, that type of thing is a part of our culture now. Uh, you know, there's nothing that anybody's hiding behind other than the fact that maybe some people don't like to share a Uh, you know, necessarily a lot about it, but there's a lot of information out there that I think needs to be shared that's not being shared. And this particular guest that I'm going to have on is going to, you know, give you her, uh, you know, experience with it. Uh, And she's got some very strong opinions when it comes to what she believes might be a problem for the future of the sport. Um, So uh, I'm real curious myself and I, and I I didn't get much detail about that because I want to be as equally uh, shocked and awed and surprised and and you know just ready to absorb all that information that she's going to share with me just like you guys will want to hear it for the first time as well so uh, i will have her on monday and uh we'll get this interview out to you immediately and i know it's going to be, be a big hit with all you guys out there and again uh, i think it's just going to be lend a little more transparency to something that has ultimately been in the shadows of our community for years and years and years we're more recently now more people are talking about it and information helps so uh, i'll help you get i'll help get that out anyhow uh so yeah we'll talk about that uh well i just did and we'll have that interview uh we're going to talk a little bit about some other things as well but in, in the meantime i just want to do a little housekeeping and let you guys know that i appreciate all your support uh please subscribe and share this video and comment uh and like or don't like uh you generally guys do a real good job of that for me out there but i know there's a lot of you listening right now that haven't subscribed yet and the only reason i ask you to do that isn't because i'm going to become an influencer any anytime soon i'm going to need another million of you guys out there in order to even make that happen but it just lends a little validation to this show and that i know i have people that are appreciating the show that are coming back week in and week out and tuning in you know and listen it what it really does is it excites me even more because i make my own investments in this show and uh, not only do I invest my time and energy, which I know, right? I, I do it because I love it. But, you know, there are some other things that I want to do. And sometimes I'm on the fence about whether I want to do those things because, you know, ultimately they're going to cost me. And I don't mind investing in my hobby, investing in my fun, which is this what this is all about. It's just more important to me that this show resonates with people because, you know, it's not fun to talk if nobody's listening, if you know what I mean. So by you guys subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, good or bad. Uh, cause I'm not going to make everybody happy every week. Lord knows I've, I've been toxic in some things I've said and, and made some people unhappy, 
But I also know those people are still with me today because they know a lot of what I say also resonates with them in a, in a good way. Uh, you always won't agree with me, but I will certainly hope you always want to listen. So like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff across all my platforms. And uh, of course, I'll be forever in your debt. I'll certainly return the favor by trying to bring you as much entertainment when it comes to the show as I possibly can. So there's your housekeeping. Um, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Battle at the Beach, July 8th. This isn't a sponsorship of any kind. This is just my good friend, Nick O'Hare, and a show that he's doing out at Harbor Beach, Michigan, uh, Lake Huron, right in the sand, Battle of the Beach, his second year. I just talked to Nick recently, and I said I'm going to give him a shout out on the show because he's looking for about 15 more competitors to fill that show up. It's at a tough time, of course. July 8th is not an easy time to promote any show. A lot of people are vacationing, but I was going to say – there's no better place to be if you're looking to find a vacation spot right now than coming up to Harbor Beach, Michigan, right on the beautiful shores of Lake Huron. They have a great festival there. Nick blew the doors off this show last year. I have no doubt it's going to happen again this year. Uh, lots of fun um, there at that festival and, and during that time of year, of course, as it is in all the Midwest because we're all excited that it's summer vacation and uh, we're uh, drinking the beers, flying the colors, and uh, having fun in the sun, generally near the water, on the water, at some beach, that's for sure. So uh, battle at the beach, that's July 8th. Um, Pro Strongman League. I, I, I want to keep every week kind of updating you on this evolution, right? Uh, Pro Strongman League has got their U64 show announced in Colorado in June. I think it's like June 17th. Um, they have their master show official now, and that's with Chad Coy at the Central States. So some of these things are starting to come together. So that's on July 8th as well. That's in Missouri. I've talked to Chad, and I'm going to get out there to that show to be a bigger part of it in some way other than competing. Uh, of course, I'd love to maybe uh, do something with the podcast, but I, I would even, wouldn't even mind maybe trying to uh, maybe co-commentate this show with somebody out there for a bit. It's going to be a lot of fun. Listen, I, that master's class is kick-ass, as we know uh, in our sport. 40-plus uh, division is the dragon's den anymore with the amount of guys coming uh, out of that 30 open class and into the open men's master's class above 40. Um, fuck. It, 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 all you're doing is getting the best of the best now that are just a little bit older, and we know that these guys still compete at the highest level. Uh, they're one of the most exciting classes to watch in Strongman as far as I'm concerned, um, not just because I'm biasly a part of it, uh, just because uh, this class keeps getting better and better. That particular show, I think 40-plus, almost 50 competitors in it. Um, and if you look at the lineup there, uh, yeah, they're the best of the best for sure. So that's on July 8th. Uh, U80 show September 9th in California. U90 show September 30th in uh, Virginia. U91 women's show October 21st in Maryland. So listen, the Pro Strongman League is coast to coast. Uh, they're taking over the nation, so to speak, and the world soon. We know that uh, PSL is going to be a part of a lot of these big events, uh, maybe again in Australia and Great Britain and, and throughout the United States. I hear Asia may be something on the on the uh, calendar in the future as well. Um, but I do know that this is going to be expansion globally eventually. I love what they're doing there. You guys know this. ADL is a part of that. And I'm going to continue to champion the PSL just because, well, simply there's just too many good people involved that, uh, the guarantee that this won't fail and it will be great. And uh, I look forward to being a part of it as much as I possibly can be. Uh, of course, that bringing you everything I can on this show and maybe then some by getting out to these shows and lending some of this uh, podcasting stuff to the pageantry of what's going on there and bringing it all back to you. Uh, and maybe even doing kind of what I did at some of the other shows uh, like Clash more recently where I did all those interviews and stuff, uh, which I thought were a lot of fun. And you guys seem to really enjoy them as well. So I'm hoping we can continue uh, doing that with PSL. Um, what else is going on? Oh, the Great Lakes Strongest Man. I, I don't want to go without mentioning that. Uh, not only is it my favorite show of the year, biasly, of course, and rightfully so, because it's the biggest amateur event in the nation, in the world for that matter, at one of the coolest venues, that being Professional Baseball Field, Turtle Creek Stadium in Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous up there year in and year out, um, or year round, that is. Uh, the Great Lakes Strongest Man this year is not only the Great Lakes Strongest Man, it is the Great Lakes Fittest. Uh, official CrossFit uh, games or official CrossFit um, uh, uh, competition, that is. Uh, it's a team event. Uh, there'll be over 100-plus CrossFit competitors competing during the same day the strongman events going on much like the crossfit games uh the road crossfit games is set up inside that stadium it's going to be very similar to the way turtle creek stadium is going to be set up for both the strongman competition and the crossfit games to happen 
all day that day on Saturday. God damn it, George. 17th, September 17th. Oh, I'm way off. 16th. It's got to be the 16th. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll be out there for that. Um, that's going to be a ton of fun, of course, because I'm there every year doing something for that. This year, we've nailed it down. Not only is this uh, show have grown every year to be the biggest and best produced amateur event in the entire world, this year, rightfully so, they brought on ADL Live to live stream this entire event and this entire day to you guys. Um, and uh, I know I have no doubt Donna will do a great job doing that. And that's exciting for me, A, because George isn't going to ask me to do it because I would shit the bed for sure. Um, but I get to just focus on what I really enjoy doing the most, and that's really commentating uh, the show for you guys. I'm going to commentate the whole show for you. Uh, I'm going to have a co-commentator. I'm not quite sure that who that is yet. However, I do have somebody in mind, uh, somebody who is not only a strong woman competitor, who isn't beautifully articulate when it comes to our sport. I see I'm trying to butter her up right now, guys. But she's also a CrossFit uh, uh, competitor more recently. So she knows the CrossFit side of things really well. Uh, but she is a personal friend of mine and somebody that I know has commentated events in the past. And of course, it goes without saying her name is Panda. And I'm going to try to get her up there. And she doesn't know this yet. I'm actually making this announcement right now on the podcast. I'm going to reach out to her. I'm just trying to butter her up. I'll get her excited. This is one of the biggest events in the world. I, I would love to co-commentate an event with her. I told Panda this down in, in uh, Clash on the Coast. I think that her and I would be the peanut butter and jelly of commentating a lot of these events uh, because we have great chemistry together, and I enjoy just talking the sport uh, with her. And, of course, we always lend some humor to it. Uh, I think we both kind of have the same sense of humor when it comes to a lot of things as well, and we would make a great co-commentating team. Uh, so I'm hoping, Panda, I'm hoping that I can get you up to the Great Lakes Strongest Man, Great Lakes Fittest in September to co-commentate that show with me. So this is my way of reaching out to you, which I'll do officially, of course, when I'm done recording here today. Uh, so yeah, we'll get on with that. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun, of course. And let's not rush summer along. I'm excited about getting there. It's still four months away, uh, but uh, you know, couldn't get here soon enough, of course. That's going to be a great time. Hey, everybody, I'm interrupting my own podcast with this special message or this this message to rescind something I'm about to say over the next few minutes here of the podcast. Listen, I had, I had said that Mitch Hooper won the Rogue Invitational uh, last year. Uh, of course, he did not. Uh, as I'm going on to tell you over the next 10 minutes about the triple crown of strongman, that being the Rogue Invitational, the Arnold Classic, and the World's Strongest Man, I made the comment that Mitch Hooper had won all three. He did not. Uh, that was a big mistake. Uh, obviously, I've got Mitch Hooper on the brain like everybody else does right now because he's won everything since that show. Uh, however, he did not win the Rogue Invitational. I immediately discovered that when I played the podcast back as I was listening to it and thought, listen, I cannot let this fly without making this correction right now because you guys will laugh me right off right off your radio dial. So uh, I'm saying now that I made a mistake. Obviously, he took third. He didn't take first. However, I would make Mitch Hooper, as we all would, arguably our favorite, going into the Rogue Invitational this year. So I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Uh, I made a mistake, and I just want to make it right. So let's get on with the scheduled programming, the Gym Life Podcast. Enjoy, guys. So anyhow, uh, moving on. Um, the biggest event of the year, right, guys, uh, in Strongman? Some would argue. Um, yeah, I think I would argue it as well, the world's strongest man. Oh, what do we say about the world's strongest man other than congratulations, Mitch Hooper? To no surprise, this guy completely dominated the strongman community ever since last year. He took third last year at the world's strongest man. Uh, if memory serves correctly, which isn't hard to do, but he won every single thing he's entered since, so that being the uh, Rogue Invitational, the Arnold Classic um, Pro Strongman event more recently. He won the Australia's International. Uh, and then I know, of course, then more recently, he's won the world's strongest man, right? So is there something I'm missing? Did this guy not just become the first, what do we want to call it? Uh, the, uh, the not trifecta, uh, what do you triple crown winner in strongman history? I don't know if that's a fact. So some of you fact checkers out there, you, you strongman guys. And the only guy that would come to mind that could win, well, listen, the Rogue Invitational is new. So if that is the third event in this leg, right, this this uh, triple crown of strongman, that being the Arnold Classic, we can all argue that's a part of it. Uh, the Rogue Invitational is no doubt a part of it now. 
and world's strongest man, Mitch Hooper is officially the first triple crown winner in strongman history. And I would challenge anybody to give me, uh, you know, the kind of the future on that, or uh, not really challenge, but do you think that's going to happen again? Do you think a guy can really threepeat like that? I don't think it's. I think we witness history. I don't. I don't think it's ever going to be done again. I'm not even saying that Mitch couldn't do it again, but I don't think Mitch could do it again. Listen, the amount of talent that's coming up through the heavyweight open class, that of course being our world's strongest man class of a competitor, it is tight, guys. And this is just keeps getting better and better. So I think it's really kind of just, you know, really special in a historic way that our first triple crown winner may be our last triple crown winner as rare as it is in horse racing if any of you guys follow that i would say it's going to be even more rare uh in strongman so congratulations mitch hooper i mean geez oh pete's man uh i'm looking forward to this rogue invitational more than ever right now because that's going to be the first leg of our triple crown moving forward i guess if we want to do it in reverse right is the strong is the world's strongest man going to be the third leg of that or the first leg of that i'm going to say it's going to be the third leg of that right you win the rogue invitational you win the Arnold Classic, and then you have to win the World's Strongest Man to make that the sort of the, you know, the the top the the top of the mountain, right? The the icing on the cake, the crescendo of that triple crowned, uh, you know, the events era that you're going to be in for that particular year. It would be the World's Strongest Man of the following year would be the third event. So let's say that one more time. That's <laughs> all you guys are probably going. What the fuck's he talking about? The triple crown of strongman. I'm going to coin it right here is the Rogue Invitational, the Arnold Classic, and the World's Strongest Man in that order. And Mitch Hooper did that uh, for the first time in history. Well, I know it hasn't been around that long. But I would argue that it won't be done anytime soon again, and it will be equally, if not more difficult, than horse racing's Triple Crown, that being the Belmont, Preakness, and uh, Kentucky Derby, right? I'm not even a horse race guy, but I think those are the three races. So congratulations. That was just awesome to see that happen, Mitch Hooper. Uh, he dominated, too. Four out of six events. Tom Stoltman was his closest competitor, and Tom had a great day, too. I mean, my, <laughs> listen, you know, you meet Mitch Hooper in the condition, shape, and the drive, and the type of year he had, you were you were hitting a, you know, you were hitting him head on, and, and he's going to win that battle every time. He's just been on that kind of groove lately. Four out of six events. I know Tom won a couple as well. Tied a couple with Mitch in that. Alexei Novikov, Trey Mitchell, Evan Singleton, great, great year by Evan Singleton. Finally got an opportunity to uh, make it to the World's Strongest Man final and also compete at a very high level. Finished with 39 and a half points. So tied Trey Mitchell for fourth, but on the count back, uh, Trey, of course, took the fourth place spot. Uh, Pablo uh, 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 Cordicaia, uh, he took sixth place. Brian Shaw was seventh place. And congratulations again, Brian. Uh, you know, I, I said a lot about Brian on the last show, and, and this show I would just say congratulations on a terrific finish despite the circumstances and finishing sixth place or seventh place. Uh, he has just done an amazing job in the sport of strongman over the years, uh, true champion, and uh, he deserved to be there, of course, as he would probably for the next 10 years. He'd be one of those guys, but Brian's decided to hang it up and uh, just move on with supporting the strongman community from a, a bunch of different perspectives and of course we appreciate everything he gave to the strongman community in return so thank you brian and congratulations i know he would have liked to done better or do better on this show but uh he did great and listen uh, being seventh strongest guy in the world i don't think anybody would complain about that at all so congratulations there's just strong new blood coming up right now uh trey mitchell and evan singleton specifically uh, from the United States are a couple of those guys right now, as well as Bobby Thompson, of course, and some others. And we're going to see these guys year in and year out. So get ready to see this new crop of athletes coming up that are joining Mitch Hooper, the Stoltzmans, of course, uh, and the rest of this guys that we saw here, including Matthew Ragg. Congratulations for making the final as well. Uh, that he, of course, is from New Zealand. Uh, so we're getting a world contingency again, representing uh, the best of the best. And, you know, some would argue in the past, like I did myself, you know, what the qualifier really means to get these guys uh, to the final. I have made mention that I'm not a huge fan of the, the, the uh, you know, the different uh, qualifying groups. I would prefer to see 30 guys qualifying in the same stretch points wise. Uh, where they're all pitted up against each other and you take the top 10 out of 30, similar to what Clash on the Coast did uh, before its uh, final show or you know this year down in South Carolina, where, well, no, I shouldn't say that. Wait a second, Clash did do that. 
Um, I think we just had that conversation enough. I just assume that. Of course, they do it the same way. I would like to see shows in the future, qualifying shows in the future. Uh, forget these event heats, uh, you know, these groupings. I think just do it as a maybe in groups, but put everybody in to qualify with this, with their numbers against everybody else's numbers. Now, I will say I took a quick peek at that. I'm not sure that that would have changed things around too much. However, there were a couple guys, and if I take a deeper look at it, which I won't, I'll leave it up to you guys if you're interested in doing this or not. If you were to take the top 30 guys, or 30 guys take the top 10 guys out of every qualifier, put them together and take the top 10, would that top 10 of remain would it remain the same? Um, I don't know. I think when I looked at it first glance, it was really close. So in defense of that system, maybe maybe I'm just completely wrong, but... I don't know. Uh, I guess play devil's advocate. I'd like to see it go the other way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on with the show. Um, we had uh, a couple things about the show that I loved, a couple things about the show that I didn't love. Uh, of course, the, the events are the events, right? And, and I know this is a bit more of a telev television production than it is a strongman event. I've come to accept that. But I've also come to accept the fact that this is the pinnacle event uh, in strongman everybody wants to win this title so despite the comparisons that we want to make between all the other pro events particularly the arnold and the rogue let's just say um it, the world's strongest man is what it is um and it is a part of that uh it's a part of that triple crown so uh, i take nothing away from the i guess you can say the pedigree of this show uh, every one of these guys are the world's strongest guys now from the show's perspective the production's perspective you know, I don't rate it very high. I think it is what it is, again, because it's a television show. You know, I, I think, you know, the sponsors are a little bit drab. I think the knack deadlift was, quite frankly, it, was, it wasn't that, you know, that there was no pageantry involved in that at all. And I, I get it. We compare these shows to, like, the Rogue Invitational and the Arnold. But don't you think, don't you think kind of, uh, you know that from a production value standpoint, we need to kind of get it up to speed with those other two shows. Um, I do, I do, um, and, and and that's no fault to Colin Bryce's. Of course, he's going to take what he can get when it comes to sponsors in the way that he's got to put the show together from a logistical standpoint. You know, this year it was in South Carolina, which oh by the way was a great move. By the way, in Sacramento, California was maybe the worst location that I've ever seen. Just like boring as fuck. Uh, South Carolina. This crowd down there was amazing. That all the stuff that I was seeing, I was like, "Wow, this is finally coming together." This is exactly what we want to see when it came to the energy of the crowd and participating in these events in this show with all these great strongmen. I think one of the greatest moments I saw was that Buzz Lightyear signing for Mitch Hooper. <laughs> that it looked just like him, and he was signing it and having some fun with the fans. Uh, a lot of the fans had signs. A lot of them were a lot of you guys that listened to this show. Uh, there was just a lot more of a general, it was a better area that drew in a lot more of our general strongman community to be a part of that spectating audience, which I loved. We should all be there. We should all want to be a part of that event. And I think a lot of you guys from that area down there and, and from everywhere else in the Southeast region and, and I guess the East and Midwest of the United States, a lot of you got there to spectate that event. So kudos to the World Strongest Man organizers for bringing it back to the east coast because that's where it belongs if it wants the biggest exposure and fan base i don't think there's any question about it so that is one thing that i really loved about that show uh but yeah but again the production value of it outside of that to me was kind of silly um i didn't really get a whole lot out of it when it came to the events and you know it looked no different than a lot of events you see in parking lots you know, with some of the better amateur promotions that you see out there and i would argue there's amateur promotions that are way better produced than the world's strongest man and i think a lot of you guys would agree with me uh but i don't want to beat that that like a dead horse either listen colin bryce is a great personality for the sport of strongman i'm not sure the logistics that he has to deal with and i'm not sure exactly the contractual things he has to deal with and i'm not really sure what type of resources he he you know has to deal with or doesn't have or has to give himself the best opportunity to produce maybe a show equal to or better than some of the other professional shows we see or certainly some of the better amateur shows we see. So I don't want to get too deep into my opinion on that. Uh, however, I would just question it a little bit. Like, okay, well, are we seeing the best that the world's strongest man can be? Or are we just seeing an effort that is a little bit, little bit uh, uh, subpar 
And I would I would question that. I would I would ask you guys to question that as well. What's your opinion on that? Because um, I, I think maybe it's the latter for me. I think maybe we're just seeing sort of a this is the this is what I'm going to put into it. This is kind of the way it's going to turn out. We'll give it a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but you know we're happy with where it's at. I'm not so sure the rest of us are. However, it was a great competition. Not taking anything away from all the competitors. Uh, but again, Colin Bryce, great personality. I love the show he did. I love his inclusion of Big Laws in this, uh, Terry Holland's in this. I know Travis Ortmeyer's. I don't know if Travis is a part of it officially or not, but I know he was real big in bringing back a lot of the information as far as the social media aspect of this goes, which I really enjoyed on my end of things, as I'm sure we all did, because that's kind of how we find out about this show. If we're not spectating it, social media plays a key component in bringing this information back to us uh, very quickly, uh, as do a lot of these uh, uh, different websites and things as well. So uh, I was super appreciative of that this year. Uh, getting the information back was quick and it was relevant well it, it was good to see within a few hours of the time frame of the events or the show completing itself and in some cases even sooner than that because a lot of you guys out there were, were posting your videos of these events as you were spectating them live uh which was awesome so i really felt like this year uh maybe a little bit more a part of that show from a spectating point of view, from a fan point of view, than I've seen in recent years and years past. And again, I attribute that maybe to the location again. I think South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, was maybe one of the coolest locations that this show has really ever been a part of stateside. Uh, and I hope they continue to stay in that region, if not that same location. Um, I think some of the other problems with this show that are worth pointing out, none of you guys are going to disagree with me, the judging is not good. It isn't good. And I know some of you out there are going to go, come on now, don't beat up the judges on just one event. And you guys know what event I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Circus Dumbbell. But we can, and I'm going to tell you why we can. Because this is the world's strongest man. This is not some parking lot amateur show with get as many volunteers as we can to no fault of the promoter. I need somebody to sit down in this chair and do the best job they can uh, referee in this or judging this event. No, that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the world's strongest man. They should have the best judges, the most impartial judges, and the most experienced judges at this event out of everybody else out there for any other event that's hosted virtually in the world because we're talking about the world's strongest man. We didn't see that. We just didn't. Um, you know, again, we can take one event, you can take two events, you can take one or two guys. Because that's all we really saw here, but that's enough to give this kind of a, a check mark that it, it wasn't as good as it should have been. Uh, Mitch Hooper didn't get that, and I don't think it changes the status of you, Mitch. I'm not saying that that dumbbell you got was going to affect your your win. It wasn't. It, whether you got that rep or not, you were still going to win this show. Uh, that was not a, a press, guys. You guys know that. There has to be better standards than that. And then Evan Singleton's, those are the two that came to mind. Neither That wasn't locked out. And again, to no knock on you, Evan, that's huge. Um, but again, you don't want to see that in World's Strongest Man judging. It just leaves things to, to you know, you're doubting, right? You, you don't, you don't want to see that. You know, you don't want to see one guy go up and do it one way and get rewarded for it, another guy go up and do it another way and not, and then another guy replicate what, you know, another guy did wrong to not get it but to still get the point for it. There's no consistency there is what I'm saying. Uh, if we don't have standardization in judging, at least judging, I get it from implement standpoint, that's a very difficult thing to do. We've had this conversation on the show over and over again. But if we don't get at least the judging aspect of this down, holy shit, man, this is the Wild West. Uh, and I don't think any any one of us uh, competitors out there would want to see it any other way than standardized judging. We all want to know what an official rep is so we're not caught with our pants down in competition when it comes to trying to complete a rep and not getting the rep we thought we got because we did the event correctly. Um, so no, I was not happy with the judging. Um, that was probably the, the only other issue I had with World's Strongest Man outside of the production value uh, was the judging of that. Um, you know, I, I think as we go down the list, uh, I thought the the events were a little bit, you know, I, gu I guess they were a little bit, I don't know, sort of ho-hum. I mean, the, the Hughesfeld Stone, uh, that hurt Pablo you know, Kordakayev uh, more than anybody because he didn't cross the line. He was penalized for that. Um, 
Well, I think we can argue that the truck pull was ridiculous. So they're okay. That's my second problem I would have. Uh, you have to test these event weights out. Um, and then they obviously didn't do that with the truck pull. Uh, they pulled this truck, and these guys were flying down the course with it. And then when you see, uh, what was it, six guys under a half a second of one another, uh, that is not a good event. Uh, that was ridiculous, honestly. Uh, that was not an event that was was subject to any kind of beta testing at all. And it proved to be one of the, well, it could have been a game changer for sure, right? Uh, Mitch Hooper did win that event, but you're talking a half a second. If you don't have judging perfect on that, that's stopwatch, guys. That's human error right there that separated the next five places, two through six, when it came to the rest of those guys in scoring for this truck pull. Uh, so again, I would argue, where is the where is the the standard when it comes to the biggest event in the world, that being the world's strongest man? Um, it wasn't there. Uh, you, really, we, with all the technology that we have that's available to us, any one of us guys, not just the promoters of the world's strongest man, to be able to do a laser light finish on the line, um, you know, some type of uh, like a stopwatch system like they use in track and field. I mean, this isn't brain surgery for God's sake. We're crowning the world's strongest man and we're going to let human error determine whether or not many of these guys crossed the line, uh, you know, or got the right time when they crossed the line that couldn't have easily jockeyed these positions around that could have ultimately resulted in a different podium. Um, I think we all, all have reason to be concerned uh, because that's just not the right way to do it. And it was a really, really, it was really poor of the world's strongest man, um, I, you know, production promoter, whoever, right? I'm not going to point fingers to not think this through. A, you should have beta tested the weight of that vehicle. It needed to be more of an obstacle for these guys to overcome, not a fucking sprint. Uh, and then certainly the idea that, uh, okay, if we know this event's going to be this close, which obviously they didn't, so maybe there's the caveat to all this, we can't have human error uh, determine where these guys finish at with my ability to hit a stopwatch button you know, within a couple tenths of a second that could lean one way or the other that could ultimately result in you know, the, this event you know, changing who finished from top to bottom. So, yeah, I had a problem with that, too, as I'm thinking through this, as I'm talking. Um, you know, the Hughes felt so carry. I thought that was great. Mitch Hooper certainly, once again, proved why he's the best in the world, the Triple Crown winner uh, at Strongman. Uh, you know, I don't have any other complaints. I mean, the Stones are the Stones. We had three guys finish, I think, uh, Trey Mitchell, um, Stoltman, and Hooper. Uh, a lot of guys struggled uh, on that fifth stone, got four stones up. Um, what else am I missing here? The deadlift. Um, I don't know. I, I think that could have been a little heavier. I, I don't, you know, again, I think we saw a lot of point splitting in this, this world's strongest man, more so than we've ever seen before. We had four guys hit seven reps in that deadlift. Uh, so a ton of point splitting there. Um, I think maybe that's why we didn't see as close of a show as we probably could have seen. Otherwise, uh, too many points splitting. I know the dumbbell was split in a lot of ways. Uh, the deadlift was split in a lot of ways. Um, what other event? I guess that would be the two. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I think ultimately I would rate this maybe a 7 out of 10 when it comes to you know overall rankings of one of the world's strongest men competitions that we've seen in history, uh, largely because we saw some pretty cool stuff there at Myrtle Beach, uh, the Mitch Hooper thing. Stoltman's story is good. A hey, two firsts and a second, not too bad, right, guys? Almost three in a row. Uh, I like the fact that Novikov is just, of course, doing what he's always doing. But I really love the fact that we got a couple new Americans now coming up with Trey Mitchell and uh, Evan Singleton. In particular, at this event, of course, I'm always going to throw Bobby Thompson's name in there as well, uh, that are coming up now through the ranks to represent the United States again. Uh, amongst the world uh, as as one of the world's best, and certainly Brian Shaw got us there. Now we need this, you know, this this pedigree of athletes coming up to uh, take over and and have the torch passed to them, so now they can represent all of us uh, there at the world's strongest man in these world events moving forward. So I, I got a lot out of it. I really enjoyed it. Those were just some things that I thought maybe could have been corrected, uh, maybe gone into a different direction. Um, oh, check out World Strongest Opinions, you guys. My friends over there, uh, Darren and John, they did a great interview with Tyler Davis, the Alabama Hammer. Uh, love Tyler Davis. You guys know this. He's uh, not only is he my friend and strongman, 
but he is uh, one of the best champions out there, a guy that I continue to root on year after year, who's in for the fight of his life, of course, at the U90 Classic uh, in England in St. Lithum, uh, uh, St. Alitham St. Anne over there in England. That's for the Chaos Classic U90 show that Luke Davies is promoting. Uh, he is the guy that's going in that's uh, top of the world right now. Uh, they had a great interview with him over there, and uh, I got to watch part of it. I'm going to finish the rest of it today. Uh, and uh, Tyler's going to be uh, the talk of the town when it comes to who's going to be podium over there in England. As far as the Americans go, because he's facing the world over there and the biggest competition he's ever faced, and including a guy that I don't think has been talked about enough. So I'm bringing him up on the show today because I want to make him a point of conversation. I think he's intentionally flying under the radar a little bit as well. I don't think he's very outspoken to begin with. He would agree. He keeps to himself. He's got his crew and his guys he trains, and uh, he's a great coach, but he's also a great strongman competitor. And that guy is Tyler Young. Um, don't count Tyler Young out. I know we've talked about Tyler Davis, and we've talked about John Hack, and we've talked about uh, 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 was it Shane Germain. Um, we've talked about... Ben Donnan, we've talked about uh, all these other great champions from everywhere else in this U90 Classic, including C.J. Krause up from the 80s, right, to the U90. And uh, we have made little mention of Tyler Young. I would say right now, if you were, if I can use my horse race analogy, right, Tyler Young would be kind of in that middle range sort of 10 to 1, 12 to 1, 14 to 1 odds. Uh, he might be your best bet. As uh, far as your bet to make a little money off this, if it were gambling, to win this whole fucking thing. Tyler Young has done something with himself that very few guys can say that they, they've ever done, and that is drop a class, go up a class, be as good as he was, two years in a row, top 10 finish at Clash, by the way, top five, I think, uh, and then step down back into his original class, be forgotten about uh, like he doesn't exist, yet be one of the craziest athletes going to this competition uh, and competing over there in Lithum St. Anne. Get ready what this guy's bringing. Not only has he been doing jiu-jitsu, uh, the core training he's doing, uh, if you get on his IG account and follow him, uh, he has been doing some crazy training, uh, very much under the radar, uh, but he's ready for battle. And I would, I, would, I would put my money on Tyler Young to make the podium. Right now, I would put my money on Tyler Young. I myself even forgot. Uh, that Tyler was in this competition. And I started looking at some of his training the other day, and I was like, holy fuck, what am I thinking? This guy's the sleeper. If we could even call the, any one of these guys a sleeper, Tyler Young is a sleeper for this show. Are you kidding me? This guy was great at the 105s. How could we not think he's not going to do very, very well here? Uh, he's ready to compete, guys. And I think he's coming in the best shape of his entire life. I think he's as strong as he was as a 105er, but athletically, uh, he's light years ahead of where he was a year ago. Uh, and in large part, Tyler, and you might agree with me, I think a lot of that jiu-jitsu and core training you're doing is just uh, reinventing yourself right now. So uh, keep an eye on Tyler Young. Uh, he's a guy that I think right now would be that sort of that horse in the race that you, 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 nobody would be surprised if you won it. But right now, if you were to make odds on all these guys, I think he's kind of getting those middle of the road odds, uh, you know, maybe a, a ten to one, twelve to one kind of thing, uh, and that'd be that'd be a really good bet right there. Uh, yeah, I would put my hundred bucks down on him, and that's what I do for the Kentucky Derby every year. I bet a hundred dollars on it, and I, I can't say I've ever won, but uh, I think I'd have better odds winning with Tyler Young. So anyhow, everybody, keep an eye on Tyler Young. Uh, that's my strongman sort of. Look into the future of my pick of the week, if you will. Uh, and every week I'm going to try to talk about one guy that I think we need to keep our eye on. Uh, this week it's Tyler. Yeah, I mentioned to you guys last week that ADL was making some big changes with their uh, programming. Um, and when I say big, uh, this pertains to every one of us, not only in the strength community but the MMA community. Um, I'm sure arm wrestling, and uh, there's no limit to this. Uh, bodybuilding. Um, it could pertain to CrossFit and Highland Games as well, and I get I encourage all my brothers and sisters out there to listen to me if you're a part of that community and pass this word along. Uh, they're the tip of the spear again. They're taking ADL Live, and they're creating channels. That's right, on their website. If you go to their website, ADL's got channels now where you can go on to a Gym Life podcast channel, uh, let's say, potentially, or a Pro Strongman League channel, or a... Uh, 
bodybuilding channel or a CrossFit Games channel or any, you guys use your imagination. Any type of organization, event, um, any type of uh, series of events or uh, any type of show, any type of, I mean, there's no limit to it. Uh, ADL now is providing a platform within their platform to be able to showcase these events and for you to go to them and find them as a part of whatever organization or whatever type of, uh, you know, whatever type of thing they're involved with, they can have their own channel. Fuck, I can even do a, a Joe Janiga channel if I wanted to, if I, if I felt like that was going to resonate with anybody, which it wouldn't. But you get what I'm saying. This is another opportunity for live streaming to become another platform, another level of a platform to give everybody another viewing experience like they've never had before. Uh, that is not a promo for ADL, guys. Uh, that is a promo for the future. ADL just happens to be the one uh, being the tip of the spear when it comes to that right now. And that's why I'm excited about it because now I can go on and love the PSL. I can love Great Lakes Strongest Man and everything George Bullard does. I can love what maybe a particular organization does in the MPC or in the IFBB, and I can follow them through this ADL channel now. And not only can they have events on this channel, from what I understand, and I'm and I, I'm certainly not quoting Don here. If I've mixed up any of my information, I'll make it right. But from what I understand, not only is that channel channel available to you for events, but any other type of content, interviews, and training, and uh, I'm sure the possibilities are endless. That channel, basically, that you can get through ADL Live, is going to provide now that platform for a number of different ways for these organizations, events, promoters, and individuals to uh, get their brand and to get their product out there. So uh, really excited about that in ADL Live. So congratulations, Don and Nancy. That is the secret they've been hiding. Uh, it's finally out. I got permission from Don to tease that to all you guys because uh, I wanted to make sure, uh, you know, Don's very particular about having things ready before he makes his announcement. So there it is. Uh, that's the ADL channels announcement for all you guys out there. So get ready for that. A lot of fun. Um, what else? Let me take a little drink of water here. Really rambling on today a little bit. I don't know if I'm making any sense to you guys out there today. That whole world's strongest man thing just kind of threw me way off because I'm looking at all these notes thinking, what can I talk about that's relevant? And I, I need to make better notes, I think. But hopefully I got my point across for all that stuff. Oh, Nick Best is back. Oh, did we not figure that was going to happen? I know he hasn't officially said that he's back doing anything other than training right now. At least I don't think. But with the 755 squat the other day and some of the gym training I'm watching Nick do on his Instagram uh, and social media, uh, yeah, Nick Best is back. One kidney and all. He's going to be just fine. Uh, I don't think any one of us had a doubt. I'm more than certain that announcement's coming soon that Nick may be back at OSG, and I hope he is. So congratulations, Nick Best, on getting healthy again and uh, hopefully getting ready to compete again. Speaking of healthy, uh, good segue there. I um, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, have podcasts that are brought to my attention all the time. Uh, one guy that brings them to my attention probably more than anybody is my dad. My dad is 71 years old today. Uh, happy birthday, Dad. Um, I love you. Uh, you've been a huge inspiration in my life. Uh, and not only that, you're the biggest fan of this show. Uh, you've said that and been that from day one, and you're not kidding. You listen to every single one of my shows, uh, and, and then some, I think repeatedly, guys. Uh, my dad's always listening to the show. He knows more about Strongman and the stuff that we're a part of than many of us know uh, because he takes everything in that I say here on this show, and uh, he, he tries to put it in the memory bank. And uh, he's it, 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 Listen, it's a steel trap for sure. At 70-plus years old, my dad is one of the most, uh, most outgoing characters you'll ever meet. Uh, he's full of life, and if you met him in public, you wouldn't even guess he's more than 55 years old. That's where I get these great genetics from, in case any of you guys are wondering. Uh, and he's a he's a great dude. Uh, we'll drink beer, shoot pool. Uh, you know, we talk about life, and we talk about lifting, and we talk about all this culture that I'm a part of that he's never been a part of outside of the stuff that I'm doing and the stuff that he sees from you guys. But he loves every bit of it, so he's a big fan. But my dad shares podcasts with me a lot of health podcasts or even strongman stuff or anything he sees that he thinks of uh that'll be of interest to me but more recently we've been sharing a lot of this sort of you know this whistleblowing in the health industry in particular stuff that we've kind of already knew about you know kind of like how different foods and different things have effects on us how the fda and the government is you know sided with the almighty dollar over our health and those type of things uh which we all know about i'm not going to start some big conspiracy channel here 
but um, they're always really interesting. And even stuff that I know, excuse me, <coughs> even stuff that I know, uh, it's just fun to kind of re-educate myself on it. And one thing more recently, this was on Dr. Uh, Pangan, uh, I think it's called Pan, uh, P-A-N-G-A-N, or no, I'm sorry, Rangan, R-A-N-G-A-N, Dr. Rangan Chatterjee. He's uh, got a podcast called, called Feel Better, Live More. It's a very, very big podcast, guys, a million type of viewers. He's, he's based over in Great Britain. Um, he does some great podcasts with a lot of these doctors, these these real sort of specific, you know, uh, the, these doctors that are experts in their field, so to speak. Uh, one of them he did recently was with Dr. Robert Lustig, who is the the who's who when it comes to knowing what and what sugar does to the body. And we all know this, right? It's, I'm not telling you, you're like, oh, Joe, I already know this. You know, I think you. I think we all know it, but I don't think we all know it and realize it to what degree we need to really understand what sugar is all about. And I'm not going to teach you about it now. I want you to go to his website, uh, and that's the the Rangan Chatterjee on, on YouTube, and that's the Feel Better Live More podcast, and listen to this interview with uh, Dr. Robert Lustig. Uh, it blew my mind. Um, and, and, it, and if we don't start thinking about what we're putting into our bodies and what we're putting more importantly, into our children's bodies now at such a young age. Um, we're, we're signing their death certificates at a very, very young age. And I think that's more about why I'm kind of voicing this right now is because I have kids and a lot of you out there have kids. Uh, we're poisoning them, guys. Every single day we're poisoning them. And I don't mean, oh, come on, maybe in moderation, a little bit this, little sugar's not going to hurt there, here and there. Do you guys realize that Two of the biggest things going on with our kids today are fatty liver disease and type 2 diabetes. Uh, yeah, no no big surprise, right? You've heard it over and over again. You know what's causing it? It's sugar. It's sugar is causing it. Uh, because one thing I picked up from this that I didn't know is sugar is viewed two different ways by the body. One sugar is as deadly to the body as, as uh, cyanide is, um, or, or is it arsenic? Arsenic. It's as deadly to the body as arsenic is. Um, it's just at a slower pace because arsenic in its pure form would kill you immediately where sugar over a period of time does the same exact thing and everybody out there consumes it pretty regularly at a considerable time every or considerable amount over a period of time. So it's doing the same exact thing to you. Another thing it does to you is um, it re, your body responds to sugar just like it does alcohol. And this is one of the findings that they discovered here. Uh, and he, Dr. Uh, Lustig shares this in his podcast, that sugar uh, is identified by the body like it does alcohol. That's why this fatty liver is becoming an issue with these kids now. And cirrhosis of the liver and all these liver issues is because they consume so much sugar, they're almost doing as much damage as, say, an alcoholic does to their body. And of course, it's just sugar, right? It's cookies and pop and cakes and all this stuff that we seem to think associate with fun and being harmless is actually quietly killing our kids like alcoholism or being or alcohol. I don't want to say alcoholism, but alcohol, although it is addictive and they've proven that as well. Uh, but I just found this podcast just incredibly uh, eye opening and uh, I encourage everybody to uh, to go watch it. Not only does not only does he have Dr. Lustig on and, and his stuff about sugar, but you know he's got like Inhoff uh, on about uh, cold cold water immersion and breathing. Um, he talks about other experts in the field of inflammation and uh, cancer and starving cancer and different foods and that sort of thing. And this isn't like people like making shit up, guys. Like, oh, that's just something else, and somebody would disagree over here. This is like legitimate studies that have been done for many, many, many years that isn't being shared uh, to the general public in large part because it's being suppressed by the way our government and the way our information is shared out there, right? Lies are being told, the truth's being hidden. That's essentially what we're dealing with inside of our food and in our health and inside that community in general. We're not being given a fair shake and not being given the right information in respect to what we need to know to give ourselves the best opportunity for a healthy, long life. Uh, and so I'm a big advocate of this and always have been. And uh, this is just another great resource that my dad shared with me that I'm watching a lot of his podcasts now because a lot of them 
uh, pertain to the, my life and, and my kids' lives and the stuff that I want to do to continue to do what I do in sport and lifting. I need to make sure my body is running at a very, uh, uh, you know, at a perfect high and uh, healthy capacity in order for me to get the job done that I need to get done to continue to do this, um, hopefully forever. So. Anyhow, that's my rant on that. I don't want to go over, you know, I don't want to be that guy here. And I'm certainly not going to share information I don't know. But I listened to that, and uh, it's worth a listen, guys. You should go out and listen to it. Uh, you're going to be amazed. You know, but one stat I need to get from that from my friends over in Great Britain that listen to the show, and we're not too far behind this, so I'm not gloating when I say this. Do you know that 56% of Great Britain um, consumes ultra-processed food? 56% of their diet is ultra processed food you know what that is guys it's like macaroni and cheese and twinkies shit that your body doesn't even recognize as food ultra processed it's like at best it's like it's like a, something you put into your stomach that provides some energy but little nutritional value at all and it's more harmful to your body than it is good that's what ultra processed equals um, can you imagine 56 percent of your food consumption comes from ultra processed food I didn't know. I didn't get the actual statistic here for uh, uh, the United States, but there's no question, and we can all agree because we see it. Walk around and look at the obesity that we're dealing with. Uh, it's probably not far behind that. It's probably 55 percent. But in any case, that's in large part because our government doesn't give two fucks about us when it comes to what people are throwing at us to eat because they're making money from it. Uh, so fuck all you out there uh, who are a part of that. Uh, massive conspiracy to dupe the rest of us when it comes to our health and longevity ah uh, so yeah i'll move on from that so you know then i start going down these rabbit holes i want to just champion on a big fuck you to everybody <coughs> um dia del dildo that's shifting gears for you dia del dildo may 6th that's my birthday too so if any of you want to send me a birthday present out there my birthday is may 6th oh you can buy a gym life podcast shirt that's right gym life podcast uh, I'll have to put that out there. I, I'm kidding, of course, guys. I don't even make it readily available to you. I haven't even done that yet. It tells you how serious I am, right? I haven't even been linked to my Gym Life podcast shirts to my sites yet. However, every now and then I'll post it. I'll be sure to do that. But uh, anyhow, that's my, uh, uh, you know, what do you want to call it? Uh, shameless plug for my Gym Life uh, podcast t-shirts in case anybody wants one. But uh, Dia Del Dildo uh, by Chris Vaccio down in Ohio. is uh, This is going to be a fun event. Yes, it is is uh, exactly to the name. It's two big black, sixty plus pound dildos. Uh, are they real? Yes. If you see them, uh, they very much resemble what a big <laughs> black, <laughs> you know, dick looks like. Uh, yeah, they're as real as it gets. Um, he has uh, turned this into maybe one of the funnest events in strongman this year, and I say that because every now and then, guys. If that offends you in any way, oh, go fuck yourself. Uh, Chris would tell you the same thing. He's having fun and doing something a little bit different to kind of just share in the love for our great sport and having some fun while he's doing it. Uh, so I love it, and I champion that on, and it's fun to see some of these fun events like uh, the Dia del Dildo uh, that we're going to see here in, uh, next week. Uh, to give you an idea how that's going to work, every single event that Chris has, he's going to have incorporated into them one or both of these big black 60 plus pound dildos that's the frank and beans guys that's the whole that's not just the shaft here okay this is of course nc17 guys so if your kids are listening turn it off uh not just the shaft which i think is about 36 inches long <laughs> this is just i'm uncomfortable talking about this it's 36 inches long at least and of course it comes with a set of rather sizable balls uh, and both these uh, dildos, of course, are going to be a part of every one of these events. So the first event is called the Tally Whacker Toss. So you can use your imagination there. I believe it's going to be similar to like a wait for distance in like Highland Games throwing or like the tire throw. So you're going to be throwing this 60-pound Tally Whacker, this, uh, this, this dildo, um, for distance. The next one is going to be the uh, Pecker Press. Uh, that's right. It's a Pecker Press. And I, I don't know quite how these events are going to work. But the pecker press, I'm thinking, is going to be some type of log press or bar press or Swiss bar, maybe. I'm, I'm getting in the mind of Chris Faccio now. And that the head of that dildo is probably going to be somewhere around your, your face as you're pressing up and down. Uh, he's got the dong drag. That goes without saying. That's going to be maybe the handle of the event. 
I'm guessing again, Chris, I'm getting in your head. I'm thinking you probably have a chain or some rope attached to the sack, the balls of this dildo, and you're essentially pulling now the dildo itself is the handle of this. Uh, he's got the glory hold. That goes without saying. That's going to be essentially holding the, uh, like a Thor hammer hold, uh, holding the, the, the phallus, the, 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 the apparatus itself uh, in an arm straight position for time. And then, of course, his last one is going to be the weenie waddle. Uh, which is a Heusfeldt stone or a, low, a carry object with this dildo incorporated into it somehow. Which, again, knowing Chris and the way his brain works, that is going to be somewhere very close to your face as you're holding this. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. So uh, for those of us who appreciate this kind of humor, uh, need to tune into ADL Live because ADL Live is going to live stream this inaugural event. I hope it's a part of our uh, sport moving forward every single year as an annual event. Uh, that being the Dia del Dildo on May 6th. Go to ADL Live. Uh, oh, no, no. It's ADL Pro dot live, ADL Pro dot live, And that, of course, is Dia del Dildo. That event's going to be live streamed. And you're going to get a chance to witness all this tomfoolery and fuckery of this event. And uh, I can't wait to, uh, you know, hopefully be a part of it. I haven't 100% been able to be sure I can make it down there. My birthday, there could be other things going on. But I did make note that this is something that I hope is on my birthday list for those of you out there in my family who are planning something for me uh, to make sure maybe this is incorporated, although I won't hold them to it. So Dia del Dodo, May 6th, ADL Pro Live. It's going to be live streamed. This wonderful event featuring these two giant black dildos, beans and frank and all, uh, as realistic as they can possibly be built. Uh, and if you don't believe me, I looked them up online. You can actually buy these fucking things. And Chris, if you bought these two dildos, God bless you. God bless you, man. I think these things are like five or six hundred bucks a piece. Uh, they really do sell these things. I was wondering where he where he got them. Uh, I'm guessing he bought them where I where I went. I'm not going to plug this site for you guys out there. I can't remember what it was. That tells you the rabbit holes I go down when I'm doing the show sometimes. But no, these this is a real thing. He bought them, and boy, they're they come up probably to like my armpit. They're very very big. So in any case, I'll get ready for that show. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I did get a question, uh, and this is sort of a ladder. I, maybe I should have brought this up a little sooner. That would have been a nice way to finish the show, of course, Dildo. dildo. You know what? Maybe I will finish the show on that. I, I can bring up this other topic here soon. Let me just think about this real quick. So I talked about a couple shows, talked about the rest of the week, WSM. Um, yeah, yeah, I talked about uh, the, the events there. Talked about Tyler Davis and Tyler Young, of course. Uh, kind of a strong man, heavy show, of course. And, you know, I love it anyhow. I don't even care. Uh, oh, I did get ordained as an ordained minister. So I'm an ordained minister officially, guys. So if you have some strength event type of wedding that you want, uh, somebody who's ordained in this community, that's me now, apparently. I might be the first. I don't know. I'm just going to say I am. That's, for, of course, for my friends Kara and Hamza's wedding that's coming up later in the summer at the end, I think in the fall. Uh, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm gonna do their wedding, officiate their wedding for them. So I'm officially ordained now, the minister of muscle, the, the reverend of the, uh, uh, <laughs> of the rack pull, the preacher of the posterior chain. Uh, that is me. I'll come up with a, a snazzy title soon. But in any case, I, I'm finally ordained for that wedding. Um, I'm going to be doing that interview again with, uh, I can't I can tell you your name, but it's going to be about women's enhancing drugs. That's going to be on Monday. So get ready for that. That's going to be very transparent, very eye-opening, some uh, very strong opinion in that, uh, and some truth and fact. And uh, it's going to be something that I'm looking forward to as much as you guys are. I don't know a lot about other than what we're going to discuss, but the details of that uh, I asked not to be a part of either because I want to be completely awestruck by what I'm going to hear that you guys, I hope, hope are going to listen to as well. So uh, in the meantime, uh, if you got anything to throw my way, you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, just DM me on Instagram, the Gym Life Podcast, Gym Life Media, Fit Jacked and Stacked. A lot of different ways to find me, including Superman's uh, underscore or Superman's underscore dad. That's my personal one on IG. And uh, feel free to DM me there as well. So in the meantime, stay fit, uh, stay tuned, and uh, stay strong.